Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Asim. I'm working as DevOps engineer. Guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the EKS. So, what we are using the submodule is that we are going to simply integrate the submodule with our existing EKS managed module. So, in my past videos, I've already covered how you can set up the EKS cluster to the managed module. If you haven't watched those particular videos, you can watch uh, those particular videos regarding the EKS setup. So, let's begin. In this video, I'm going to cover um, how we can install. Uh, the ALB ingress, um, the EB setup is going to be automatically done with this uh, managed module of EKS. So we are going to install the Carpenter and we are going to set up the two um, groups uh, regarding the management of EKS cluster. One is going to be the EKS admin group and other is going to be the developer group. So uh, first thing first, what we are going to do is simply uh, you can have to this section. What you need to do is simply copy this uh, URL and simply clone this repo. So if I don't have this here, uh, nothing is there. It is mounted on my Windows host machine. So simply what I'm going to do, I'm going to clone this guy, and then I'm going to open this guy in my VS Code. So simply open this in VS Code. I just want to show you that what we are going to do regarding the backend, uh, which is S3 bucket. I've just actually commented out. So uh, as this is the sandbox environment, I've shown you how you can set up the backend. For that, you need to uh, create S3 bucket. So for this demo, make sure you uh, have installed AWS CLI and Terraform. So I've already installed everything in my container. So regarding the environment setup i've already made videos how you can set up the environment in containers so you need to simply install that i mean that particular run that particular script and all the relevant packages are going to be installed for uh, you guys in that uh, particular container right so the reason for setting up the environment in container is that uh, your actual host environment is not going to be polluted so regarding this setup uh, let me do first of all do terraform init and terraform apply then i'm going to demonstrate what uh, we are going to do and how we are going to set up all the thing. So regarding the setup, it is going to be pretty much easy. What you need to do is to simply do Terraform in it, and then I'm going to do Terraform um, apply dash auto approve. So uh, what it, uh, currently it is doing, it is, uh, it is going to set up a local backend for us, and it is going to initialize by downloading all the rele relevant module for us. Until then, I'm going to do the demonstration. So let me do uh, navigate to this particular section in the main PF, right? So you see in the main TF, what we're going to do, uh, we are just making sure that uh, AWS CLI installed and Terraform definitely should be there. And then we have a uh, required provider, which includes the AWS kubectl, Helm, and um, of course, Terraform, a Terraform version, uh, more than one is going to be okay. So this is the backend. As I discussed, uh, I've commented out this section as this is the demo, so I'm not going to cover all the basic stuff here. So uh, this is the locals. Uh, this is the name of the cluster, and the cluster version is going to be the latest version provided by uh, AWS. So this is the VPC module. So in this VPC module, we are going to use this version. And this is the official managed module uh, from the official uh, Terraform so registry. And you simply need to Google it and navigate to the Terraform registry and you will find this module. So everything is pretty much the same as I covered in the in my previous videos. And this is the side ranges, private, public, subnet, and database subnet ranges, right? And um, DNS source names are, uh, I mean, enabled. So uh, these are the tags uh, with regard to the, for instance, this is regarding to the internal ELB and uh, for external ELB, we need this tag, right? And uh, some of the tags are regarding the Carpenter. So uh, I've already added that. So local cluster name is going to be picked up from that particular variable which we have set in the, on the top. So let's see how much has been done. So it is currently downloading all the relevant uh, packages in fact modules. So if I navigate to uh, the main directory, we'll see uh, the dot Terraform directory is going to be created and everything is going to be downloaded from remote to the local. So I can navigate to the Terraform, this dot Terraform, which is the hidden directory is uh, there. And you see all the uh, relevant modules from the remote is currently in um, downloading uh, state. So then if I navigate to um, the section regarding the case cluster, this is the managed module from the official uh, Terraform registry. So this is a version we are using. So as I told you, we are not using the official uh, module. So uh, let me navigate to the section where uh, I'm talking about the official module uh, regarding the Ink is blueprints, so let me just navigate to that section and simply okay. Uh, this is the add on module which we are going to use, so let me show you some of the stuff that every link I've already added. So, uh, you can simply see or you can see a lot more detail. So, this is the official module regarding the EKS blueprints. Uh, so instead of using that, we are going to simply use the module because we just need to install some of the packages which are actually more of a wrapper regarding uh, you know um, the helm chart. So 
you can manually install as, as well. I mean, for instance, uh, if you navigate to my Google videos, which I've written in the past, if you want to set up all the stuff manually, you can do that as well. But it uh, gives us an ease of use. That's why I'm not using the complete module. I'm using some module. So uh, this is the EKS Blueprint official module. So if you navigate to the release section, you see this is the latest release. But we're not going to use that. Instead of we are going to use the official EKS module. And what we're going to do, we're going to simply module, which is the this is the add-on module. So let me copy this guy and simply, okay, this one is, I've already opened it. So this is the one, everything regarding the, uh, I mean, documentation is there, what entries or uh, what what uh, inputs you need uh, are going to be available here. So let me close that. And definitely the version is going to be, as this is the sub module, so we are, uh, the version reference is going to be the same as uh, of the actual module, right? So this is the add-on module, um, we are simply, uh, we are going to simply integrate that particular module to our ES cluster, right? So uh, this is our EKS cluster uh, name, endpoint, ID. So where I'm getting all these values, I've already shown you from the Kubernetes add zone. You can simply um, uh, see all the inputs values from there. So some of the examples you can see from here as well. So simply copy this thing and navigate to this section. And some of the examples you can um, see from here as well. So I've already added this stuff uh, from here. So all the examples, or for instance, you see these, these are the inputs. Uh, we have taken from the official stuff. So this uh, the carpenter example I'm putting here. So just to give you an idea what we are going to do, and uh, we are going to simply integrate, how we are going to integrate examples and links are already there from the official documentation, right? So uh, this is the stuff we are going to do. Let's see, uh, it is currently installing all the modules uh, it has done. So we are going to simply do apply auto dash approve. And then I'm going to give you more detail regarding that what we're going to do. Uh, it will take about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Everything is going to be done. So let me navigate back to the section from the start and uh, let, let me start from the HSVPC. So as I discussed, uh, this is a big basic stuff. We are going to set up the custom VPC in this particular custom VPC. We are going to install our EKS, uh, set up our EKS cluster, right? And this is the EKS cluster module. So in this official EKS uh, module, what we're going to do, uh, we are going to provide the name, that's the version which is going to be latest VPC IDs, subnet IDs, and you see subnet IDs are going to be the private subnets, which means that our uh, custom managed, um, in fact, our managed node groups are going to be uh, deployed in these private uh, subnet groups, right? So enable IRSA is the OIDC, right? And um, private access point and public access point set to true, so we can access from our uh, remote machine uh, to that particular uh, remote uh, Kubernetes cluster, right? So uh, as I discussed that we are not going to use um, install EBCSA driver because by default, if you use this particular latest uh, official EKS cluster module, so you see EBCSA driver is already there and um, these cluster adds on, you see CodeDNS and QProxy EBCSA driver, you can get now by default. So we are not definitely going to install these. Another additional rules which we need uh, for, um, for instance, uh, like uh, we need to use, uh, we need to, uh, we need for the carpenter to in, in order to com communicate. So these these are the ports, eight port four three, right? And uh, no additional security groups rules uh, by allowing the ingress uh, rules. Uh, everything from zero to zero. I mean all uh, all is allowed inside, uh, which is which is the cell, right? And egress traffic, right? So this is the pretty much basic stuff. So um, these are the timeout values and uh, other pay time rolled through. Because we are going to create a So guys, other stuff is regarding the creation of I'm role. You can uh, give this particular role name um, if you want to set up. Uh, this is required uh, for the classic creation. And the security groups to everything is pretty much there if you navigate to the EKS module. So detail regarding that particular module is already there. You need to navigate to this section. If you navigate uh, to this section, simply copy this guy. And regarding every input, you can see all the detail what each input can do. Uh, definitely can wait. Definitely, it is not. It is not possible for me to cover every input. All right. So, okay. Simply, okay. Is the let me simply type this module. Now we get to go. That's Google.com. Okay. And simply type Terraform EKS module. That's it. Simply copy this guy. And. This is the module, right? So this is the module. This is the module EKS. So you need to copy this guy and the same stuff we have done there. So this is the version and these are the inputs I'm talking about. So what you need to do if you want to read, uh, I mean, see all the documentation, uh, you see these are the inputs. 
and the description of those inputs. So simply you can navigate to this section and if you want to see a lot more details, you see a lot of inputs. And uh, if you want to see the details uh, regarding this particular module, so simply scroll up, scroll up, click this guy, you will be navigated to this GitHub section where you will see all the examples of that particular section. So click on, uh, click on examples, you will, see, you will see complete example, or you want to see all the stuff so you can get more details, how to use it, what has been done. So this I need to show you. So simply uh, navigate to uh, my channel, Cloud Geeks, okay? So simply navigate to the section. Uh, as I, in past, I have manually shown you how you set up the ELB ingress controller, how you can do the cost reduction uh, with this uh, carpenter. So all the installation we have done manually, and now we are going, going, we are going to use the managed uh, sub module right instead of using the full module because we need to simply install this uh, stuff uh, in an automated way to the terraform and this is the other stuff and other videos if you will uh, i mean definitely need other stuff to see regarding the eks gke rabbit and people state and simply do that so uh that's it regarding that what we're going to do and then um if i scroll down then we are going to simply uh uh, as I discussed, uh, do the cluster ads on um, 4DNS, QProxy, DC site driver. Uh, and uh, these are the additional rules regarding uh, the security groups, uh, which we need for the carpenter and data I've already discussed. So, okay. So uh, this is the sub module inside that EKS module, which we're going to, which we are actually using in the EKS module. See currently the cluster creation in progress. So if I navigate to this section, Kubernetes uh, EKS. So you simply click this guy in the new tab, you will see that the version uh, one point five currently in the installation uh, process as i told you that it will take about uh, 15 to 20 minutes till then i'm going to do the demonstration that what we're going to do we are going to use the ekis managed node groups right uh, one the name of one node group is going to be the on demand and we are going to use the uh, our custom launch templates so uh, additional uh, iron policies which are actually required by uh carpenter so for the sake of uh, you know make things work right. We have already added these uh, eight of these managed policies, right? So um, and then this is the min max size I'm, I've already set up. So uh, regarding this type, as this is the demo, I'm going to use the 3, 3, 3, 3, uh, T3 medium, sorry, uh, the tank twister. So, um, and this is going to be the on demand and subnet to launch uh, temple to enable monitoring. If you want to simply uh, don't want this, you can simply uh, set it to false because it will, uh, take some additional costs. So EBS Optimus 2, and this is uh, the volume type is going to be GP3, volume size is going to be 50, and additional CPU needed. So also added something regarding the security best practices that our disk uh, should be encrypted. And even one thing uh, I would like to share regarding the um, secrets of the disk master at this time. Uh, secrets are going to be uh, uh, secrets encryption is on. You see, from the security perspective, uh, in the Kubernetes, uh, secrets uh, are going to be encrypted at rest. So our uh, disk, uh, EC2 disk, are going to be encrypted. Our uh, this area of secrets are going to be uh, encrypted as well. So this is something with regard to the security best practices, and then um, the spot and the other thing we are not going to actually use that, but that is how you can add. The second, uh, you can say that uh, uh, managed node group. So this is how you can add it. So currently I, I set up the min max size, uh, I mean desired side size and min size to zero. So pretty much the same stuff, but you see the main difference is the capacity, capacity tab is going to be the spot. And um, this is also very much the area that we are going to use the manage uh, auth config to do because we are going to use these two uh, auth roles Right, one as I discussed, one is going to be the EKS system admins, and other group is going to be uh, our developers. So, if I navigate to the section, uh, this is actually going to be created. So, simply navigate me, uh, I mean, navigate to this section, excuse me, uh, I am, and you will see uh, the two groups. Two groups has uh, two policies, STS policies, right? Uh, and in those STS policies, you will um, automatically, um, I mean, Terraform attach, uh, Terraform is going to attach those particular roles. So if you navigate to the users box, you see automatically it has created EKS admin, uh, Cloud Geeks EKS. This is our name of our cluster. So that's why I added in a way that if you have multiple cluster in the same account, you can uh, have, I mean, no issues by the creation of these groups. So uh, you can definitely, this name is me. So I've added the variable with these names, right? So let me, uh, okay, let me, Go back to where we left. So these are uh, 
the stuff we need for our developers and our sysadmins. So as I'm uh, the owner of these clusters, uh, I have full access. And if you want to give uh, full access to that particular uh, user, simply what you need to do, uh, create a user and simply add that particular user uh, in that particular group, EKS admin and uh, the configuration with regard to that particular user I've uh, covered later in my video. So this is where uh, we are creating the EKS admin groups through the Terraform. These are also managed modules. So uh, this is where we are creating the policy, right? Um, EKS admin group. Uh, we are setting up the policy, uh, describe cluster, right? And then this particular role is also from the AWS managed role. In this, in this particular role, we have given this EKS admin. As I discussed, uh, I've used the local cluster name. This is the variable which I've used to make sure that every name is unique uh, with that particular cluster. So a creation of a role is going to be true and the above policy which we have created from the top is going to be uh, this one. We have used the ARN here and uh, trusted role ARN is going to be, uh, I mean, the account ID and rules. So uh, then uh, this role is going to be set up. Then we are going to set up the custom policy and which is also through the manage module and that particular custom STS policy, we are going to provide the ARN of that, which we have ARN of that particular role which we created up above. So you see, uh, this is the custom policy, right? Uh, this is the JSON report. And in that, we have actually provided the role which we have created in step two. So to make things understand it, understandable, I've created, uh, I've used step one, step two, step three. And uh, you see in step three, we have provided the step two role which we have created in step two. So in step four, uh, simply what we are going to do, we are going to create one group, right? So this is a step four. So uh, in this step four, uh, which is the creation of group. So this is the creation of group, for instance, this uh, admin group and developer group. So if I click this guy, you will see one um, policy uh, is going to be attached. So uh, if you navigate to the permission, permission section, you'll see this particular policy, a similar policy is going to be available. So um, I've designed this uh, module in a way that uh, when you want to add a user, simply create a user from the UI and manually add that particular user in this group, that's it. Simply anyone uh, with uh, you know, no knowledge of uh, I am simply create user and simply add that user and we will add that particular user is admin access or developer access right so okay this is uh, pretty much done and uh, similar stuff i've done for the developer same step number one step number two uh, is going to be there so i'm not going to cover the same stuff but this is pretty much the same stuff so the developer access are going to be a little bit different in a way that let me show you that so in a while so i will cover that so currently we are in that case so let me finish that part so if you navigate to the terraform section click this guy Okay, so if you click this developer section, so uh, if you click this reader.yml, what reader.yml is that it has the cluster role and the cluster role binding. So in this, in this particular section, um, this is the reader and this has these uh, verbs, you can say that, uh, or the permission which we have granted regarding the uh, pod logs, the developer wants to see the pods logs there. We can, uh, we can do the cost reduction in a way that, uh, for instance, if you have dash staging environment, you can do the cost reduction that you will not going to set up that particular logs. Uh, which I've uh, which I've covered in my previous video, for instance, in production you can set up the uh, Kubernetes logs through the Elasticsearch, and um, let me never get to this section. Cloud Geeks. Okay, so click this guy, and then we get to the video section. So let me scroll and okay, so let me do. Okay, uh, think Nginx post direction. Yeah, Terraform Kubernetes logging with Fluent Bit and Elasticsearch. If you want to see the detail regarding the how we can set up the production, and we can see this particular video, how we can set up the in the third uh, this section we are going to. Fluent Bit and Elasticsearch. In fact, what we're going to do, we are going to uh, provide access to our developers, development team, instead of setting up that, we're going to uh, this particular access to see their logs and we are going to set up the lens on those particular machine so can so they can easily get the logs uh, of that particular deployment or their application so i'm going to show you later so this is what we need to apply so if you navigate back to the section you see uh where we are let me scroll a little up to that particular group so if you navigate to the ek section you see uh, this is the eks admin so this is the reader regarding that particular um I'm group, and then we are going to simply do QCD apply to give this permission. So it is going to be created. So everything is set up for us. And I have done Terraform apply, auto uh, apply to 
to do all the deployment, uh, to do all the deployment. So everything is pretty much set up. So what we're going to do, um, first of all, let me show you that our EKS uh, cluster should uh, be set up. So simply click this guy and you will see that um, everything is set up for us. And what we're going to do, first of all, we are going to create an IAM user and uh, we are going to use these particular commands. And uh, let me do one stuff here. So what I'm going to do, Okay, so um, I'm going to simply import this cluster EKS update. IQ config name of the cluster is cloud geeks EKS dev, and the region is going to be US uh, East one. So you see, the context has been imported. QTTL I get. You will see two nodes, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do simply uh, bring this guy to my uh, to my. Uh, in fact, one thing I would like to share with you guys. Okay, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to navigate to the developer section, right? And simply, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do kubectl kubectl apply hyphen f um, readable.yml. So let me do that. So it is do the cluster role, set up the cluster role and cluster role binding in that reader um, section. So it has two parts, you see, that one part is regarding the AWS and another part is inside the Kubernetes cluster. So inside the Kubernetes cluster, we have applied that part to make sure um, that particular user, for instance, we are going to create one user and we are going to, let's say this is uh, this is uh, this user is going to be the developer. And this guy is the cloud user is the admin. So that's why he's able to do everything. He's already in the EKS admin, um, whether you add it or not, because this is the creator of the cluster. Right, so what we're going to do, we'll create one user with name Asim, and let's say, and assume that uh, this guy is a developer. So uh, we are going to simply uh, add this user, click this guy into the EKS developer. So simply click next. This user is created and uh, okay. So simply click this user and navigate to the security uh, credential area. And simply, like this section. So what we are going to do, uh, we are going to simply create an access key and simply click this uh, command line section and click this section, create access keys. So uh, we are not going to actually download it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more shell into this con uh, container. So if I do Docker PS, you will see that um, this is the another shell I'm going to take uh, in this uh, sandbox. Right. So I'm going to use the same user in this. Uh, I mean, I'm going to uh, create one user. So regarding uh, profile, so regarding that command, they're going to be there. Let's say this user is going to be this uh, profile name is going to be awesome. So simply I'm going to export this file. And I've, I've added all the commands here. So simply you need to copy these uh, commands. So, so this is the profile name and simply I'm going to add the credentials from here. So simply click this guy and paste it and simply click this guy and paste it, right? So region is definitely uh, going to be my region, US East one, right? And uh, let's say this JSON. And what we are going to do, simply copy the other command. So we just wanna make sure that uh, your profile is okay. So it should work and it is working. So what we are going to do now, uh, we are going to update this section. So you need to copy this section, navigate to the IAM section. Definitely, I need to update the uh, account ID, but I just want to double check that uh, this role should be created. So definitely it is created through the Terraform as I already shown you, you just need to do Terraform init in Terraform apply. You just have to watch this particular video till end that's what we are going to do. And if you navigate to the section roles, simply type, I mean, paste it here. So this is the role and you need to um, copy the ARN of that uh, particular role, right? So what we are going to do, um, I'm going to simply paste this guy here. So in fact, I've uh, updated the name here. So you need, you need to do exactly the same stuff here. So uh, then what you need to do, copy this guy. And what I'm going to do, and uh, I'm going to simply, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to CD, uh, CD into home, which is my home and root, CD into this guy. And simply I'm going to do Wim to this config. So uh, you see this profile of our is created. So press O and simply right click it, paste it. So I'm going to say I'm going to say this guy right, and what I'm going to do um, I'm going to check this STS profile. This is this profile has developer profile, which we are going to assume the role of that particular uh, role we have created, and I, through Terraform and everything I've already showed you. 
and then what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to say configure list, use this particular command. So currently uh, we have no profile setup. So let me set up this command export profile and the profile is going to be developer profile. So what I'm going to do, uh, if I do, if I simply run this particular command, you will see that this developer pro profile is set up. So uh, what I need to do from here, I'm going to simply do do terp, I mean, remove this uh, cube context. So if I do cube you'll get notes, I should get an error. Everything is using remote. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to copy the same command and, and I'm going to import the context, right? So let's do that. So context has been added, but with regard to that particular user, um, for instance, um, we have exported this profile now. So cube sheet, can I do auth? So it will say no. And if I do, can I get pause? Because I've, pr I've provided additional um, privileges uh, to see the logs as well as I, as a developer, you should be able to see the logs as well. So that is where going, we are going to do the cost reduction in our logging area. So simply and, and do the quick troubleshooting. So developer and DevOps teams are going to be quickly involved in, in case of any issues, in case of any bugs or whatever um, we face issues with regard to the application, right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply cut up the contents. So let me navigate to this. Uh, uh, okay, use the same tab, CD into MNT. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut up the contents of um, cube uh, context to what this context to MNT with the name config. I just wanna uh, use this context. You see, this context has something different in a way that you see environment, AWS profile, and this is the developer profile we are using. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to simply bring this guy into my uh, lens, right? So uh, I think I have the latest version of lens is already installed. So that is how I will show you that you can, uh, the developer can see the logs of their application. So that is pretty much uh, in a way secure that they won't be able to delete any things. They won't be able to um, edit anything. But uh, as far as the logging stuff, which is the most crucial regarding the application from the application perspective is really important. So we have run those particular verbs uh, in our uh, application. So let's try to access that. Okay, what I've done, I forget. This is unable to access it because what I need to do on the host machine, we need to get the same. So uh, it is going to authenticate. So if I navigate back to um, area of this um, AWS access key and secret access key, uh, I need to uh, do this AWS configure. Okay, and let's say this is my default profile. So let's try to use it and let's try to reconnect it. Okay. Okay, I need to uh, use the same profile. So let me do the same stuff. Uh, in my uh, machine, right? So I will be back with you guys in a moment. So guys, I'm trying uh, the same stuff which we have done in uh, on our container, update the lens. So it is unable to uh, connect. So I'm going to export this profile, right? And uh, let me do the stuff there. So you see currently, uh, let's try to connect. You see, we are unable to, uh, Connect. So let me try to do the same commands which I've done. So guys, uh, you see, I've done the same stuff which we have done on our container. So uh, this is the same stuff which uh, we have done in our container, and I need to do that on my host machine uh, to make things work. So see, this is the config, and uh, this is the workload section. So um, uh, this developer has able to see that uh, namespaces, and for instance, uh, if this guy want to see the logs, uh, he or she can see the logs, for instance. And uh, if you want to uh, delete or edit this stuff. You can do that. So uh, we need, uh, so that is uh, very uh, helpful in a way that this is how we can save the logging cost and the developer, developers do like the UI stuff and it would be really easier for them to see the logging of their application. So uh, that part is done regarding our, uh, you know, um, the step which we have done regarding our two groups, uh, which we have set up through Terraform, IKS admin and IKS developer. So that part is pretty much completed. Now what we are going to do uh, simply, uh, let me navigate to the section. So let me close the stuff, which is not even required now. And um, in fact, let me open this in VS Code. I just want to show you uh, some of the stuff regarding the Carpenter, right? So, um, okay, now uh, what we're going to do, uh, we are going to set up the ELB ingress. Uh, okay, regarding the EBS, as I uh, already discussed with you guys, uh, if you navigate to the EBS section, you see the EBS CSI uh, drivers are already uh, by default 
comes up with this uh, Terraform EKS managed module. So we are not installing those particular EKS ESA driver. So how we can test it. So um, uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply uh, disconnect this profile and I'm going to use the regular uh, EKS admin uh, profile, right? So let me do that. So simply um, from the setting, I'm going to remove all the stuff. So click this guy and remove this config, right? So everything is going to be clear. And then uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to roll back to the section and simply remove the stuff. Right. So guys, in this tab, I don't have any um, environment exported. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply remove this particular tab and uh, uh, I'm going to simply go to context. So let's do that. And I'm going to keep sure you have notes. So everything um, should be uh, with regard to the with regard to the admin, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply do dot cube and do config and uh, I'm going to simply override that particular file. So let me do that and you, see, you will see the new context is going to be available. You see, it has uh, no environment setup. So this guy has the full access. So simply I'm going to import this guy in my lens. So I've shown you how you can set up or reduce the cost of your logging uh, through this amazing tool lens and provide uh, those developers free. It's open source and uh, you can do that. So why it is un unable to connect because I need to provide the regular credential so currently the profile setup on my host machine is with regard to that particular ASM awesome user. So simply I'm going to remove that. Let me come uh, back with you guys in a moment. So guys, I've uh, added the credential. Let's try to reconnect it and hopefully uh, I should be able to connect with this cluster. So it is actually connecting and uh, this time we are connecting with the full EKS admin access. So guys, uh, let's try to navigate to the port section and uh, what we are going to do, uh, I want to show you the EB side. As I told you this, we are using the official uh, module. So by default, I mean, um, the option regarding the EBS is already there. So I've just, uh, I'm not using the Terraform, uh, like um, some module, um, blueprint some module to set up the EBS controller. So EBS CSA driver, which is the container storage interface driver. So let's try to test it. So simply what I'm going to do, so simply do kubectl, kubectl apply hyphen f and EBS CSA driver. And let's try to um, set it up. Uh, what we have in this, so, um, and the I'm not going to cover all the details, but I just want to show you the storage type should be uh, mounted with that particular Nginx container. So if I navigate to the section uh, depot, and you see currently uh, this Nginx uh, port is in pending state. If everything goes well, it should be okay in running. And I'm going to show you the storage persistent volume. Uh, this is the persistent volume you see it has bound. Uh, this is the five gigs, and this is the storage class. So that is why uh, this container is running because. Uh, it is now bound. So CSA test has completed. And uh, now we are going to do the other test. Uh, let's say, let's say what we are going to do. Let's say I wanna uh, test the ALV ingress. So if I get to the ALV ingress section. So we have app one, app two, YAML and cloud player uh, app one.yml. What are these three files? So uh, let's do one by one. So if I get to the second cube, uh, uh, cube system and uh, if you navigate to this section ELB load balancer controller so what we are going to do we are going to simply open uh, these particular logs of both the pods so let me do that so do it up so uh, to make HTTP support what we are going to do uh, navigate to the section here and from AW section what we are going to do uh, navigate to the section um, search type search right manager and uh, I need to provide uh, my domain name and I'm going to set up uh, the white card certificate for my domain. And uh, from here, I'm going to type uh, in fact, route 53. I'm going to simply click this guy. And from here, uh, I'm going to show you the provided domain name to this environment. I'm going to simply navigate to the hosted zone, which is the actually public hosted zone. So in route 53, you have uh, two uh, type of zone, public and private hosted zone. So simply, uh, I'm going to click this guy and then I'm going to copy this name. Right, and I'm going to uh, ask for the certificate. So click this guy request for the wildcard certificate. Click next. I'm going to put a wildcard or star here and press dot. Press control V uh, for this name. Press for the certificate. Uh, refresh this guy. You will um, you will see the um, C name shortly available. Click this guy and the C names are going to be this. So I'm going to copy these guys and I'm going to create one C name record for the search validation. We are going to do the DNS validation here. And I'm going to remove this particular guy from here, right, till this dot. And then I'm going to 
uh, update this guy that uh, we are going to use a C name and simply copy that as a section of the C name, which is the value, um, create record. So if everything goes well, uh, we will see a valid certificate. And what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do a little wait regarding the search validation. So we are going to use the SSL uh, discovery here, search discovery. So regarding this domain, so what I need to do, I need to copy this guy and navigate to the app section and we're going to deploy the app one. So remove the stuff. Uh, okay, this part is done, developer is done, EBS is done. We are in e ALV ingress section. So uh, simply navigate to this <laughs> ALV section. So as I discussed, um, we are going to use this uh, uh, domain name and um, the SSL uh, automated discovery is going to be happen. I need to make sure the name uh, star dot. And this uh, start, it is going to automatically discover those words. And we are going to use this name. So simply uh, what I'm going to do, I need to also update this area and copy this area. So if the certs are valid and everything is okay, it is going to auto discover, but we need to wait before do the QCT applied. So if I navigate to this section, refresh and it uh, has been issued. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to simply apply this and I should be then app one dot I'm going to apply it and uh, namespace app one and we applied it so uh, what it does uh, it is uh, going to uh, okay my bad uh, in the typo in the bug command app one so we've created two namespaces and reapplied it and i'm going to simply remove the other namespace navigate to this section you can do it through the command line as well and but you can do the through the uh, this console as well so uh, let me just do this stuff here. Okay, so this is wrong, and uh, I'm going to remove this guy. You don't want it, right? So, so if I do kubectl, uh, we get ingress, we get ingress in namespace app one. You see, our um, load balancer has spin up. So if I navigate to the load balancer controller. It will be okay. It will say registering targets. So if I navigate to the section, um, okay, uh, navigate to the EC2 section, click this guy, and navigate to the load balance section. You will see the ingress rules, target groups. I'm going to show you quickly. And uh, some of the other stuff regarding the annotation I've added in other files, I'm going to show you. Those are regarding the security. And uh, if, you, if you are using uh, the Cloudflare, you can use those particular IP addresses. If you're using VPN, for instance, if you want to allow your website only through that particular VPN IP address, you can do that as well. I'm going to show you shortly that particular stuff. So, and um, now we get to the load balancer. You see, it is it has been created. So we have two um, listener 40 and um, 80 and 443. Click this guy. In the next tab, you will see um, rules as well. So let it open. So this is a 443 listener. Uh, they either updated their UI. So in this section, you will see the details, and in this, you will see the rules. And uh, we are using the. So if the request come to from this um, subdomain routed to this uh, um, target group, in that target target group uh, we have our application. It should be healthy. I scroll it down. You see target type IP, and uh, simply I'm going to paste this guy here. So uh, okay, one thing uh, it's not going to work. One thing I forget. Uh, what you need to do? Uh, I mean. Um, we need the DNS entry. So we are not doing the automated DNS entry. If you want to do the automated DNS entry, you can watch uh, my particular video regarding the automated uh, DNS entries in the Route 53. So um, simply copy this guy and navigate to, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. In the create record, I need to copy the load balancer DNS. So navigate to the load balancer section, copy the DNS, which is the DNS name. And uh, if I click this guy or simply click this DNS name. So navigate back to the section type, App one, make sure there should be no typos. Um, you can set the alias. Let's try to let me show you uh, how you can set up the alias. Click this guy. Endpoint is going to be uh, your application load balancer region is going to be US East one. Copy this guy, and the application load balancer is going to be automatically pop populated here. And uh, create this particular uh, record. Okay, guys. So let's do that and. Uh, but doing that, uh, if you uh, simply copy this, uh, if you click this guy and uh, navigate to the section, you will see the multiple A records with regard to the ELB is going to be available. So if I type what is uh, my DNS, I can do uh, 
and as to up as well but you can use uh, these online um, useful websites as well so if i do uh, look for the dns propagation search for it you see the multiple ip addresses these are the ip addresses a record of the application load balancer so let's try to access these so basically it will create um 18443 uh, allow in the security group so um we need to wait for a while as i discussed uh, the dns propagation will take some time so let's try to simply access it or simply use the incognito mode as well or let's try to use this uh, we need to wait for a while okay so and one thing uh, regarding your machine you just need to be uh, make sure that uh, you uh, you can use the cache only dns so let me uh, do i think to uh, run do instead of resman do um and cpa dot cpa let's say typo and i'm just going to use the google cache only dns and a dot a dot eight and a dot eight dot four dot four save it close this guy back to this guy let's try to reload and it should work so if you face uh, these sort of uh, issues uh, this is a quick tip you can do that so guys uh, this is our application mode regarding the uc secure um, alb ingress controller uh, instead of manually installing it uh, in our past videos we are set up we have set up through the eks uh, loop and sub module so uh, regarding the other stuff in for instance app 2 it's pretty much the same the application is different but uh, if you see the globe uh, player, i'm not going to do all the stuff but i'm going to show you what you can do with it for instance I've added the uh, annotation here, the geo stack, and added the inbound side ranges, which are um, IP version 4 and IP version 6 of Cloudflare. You can use the additional security. The traffic is going to be routed through the Cloudflare, and it's going to be got a bit much more secure that you need to make entry in the Cloudflare. And other option you can see, uh, for instance, um, I want to see my IP. So let's try to uh, apply this. Uh, I just want to show you uh, this example, right? And so let me do that. And this is with regard to the, for instance, you have your uh, VPN and you want the ALB ingress to show that particular traffic. So what it is actually doing, it is making the ingress rules in the security group by allowing the traffic, uh, allowing that particular IP address. So instead of manually doing the stuff, uh, you can do um, and the automated way through um, through these annotation, right? So, okay, 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 so uh okay let me copy this guy and i need to update this guy and get this guy right so instead of f1 so what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to put uh wildcard here right and so uh, I also need to let's say all this uh oh it's gonna be let's say app three okay to make sure uh we should have no issues and um and the IP address is so um, what is my IP? So if I do go if config if config dot me uh, config dot me. So this is uh, my IP address, public IP address, right? I just want to allow the traffic from this IP address slash thirty two, right? Right. So uh, okay, everything seems to be okay. So uh, let's try to uh, navigate uh, to the section if I do ls and kubectl kubectl apply hyphen f uh, cloud player i mean this is you can say that uh it's, it's a vpn and uh, uh, my vpn address is this and i want to secure the traffic and what it does it is going to allow traffic uh, only from that particular address so um uh, okay so so uh, uh okay so what i need to do uh, i need to make sure uh, i make an entry in um my dns and uh if i navigate to uh, the dns section and uh, and let's try to simply edit this particular role instead of new entry and let's try to save it and uh, let me do so i need to wait for a while till the propagation happen so till then i'm going to pause the video right so guys uh, i'm back one thing i need to update you uh, i mean i've provided my IP address to make sure uh, if you provide uh, if you have provided only the IP version 4 uh, ranges, so you have to make sure you uh, command this dual stack because with the dual stack, you need to provide that version 6 ranges as well. So, um, for instance, this is your uh, VPN address. So, let's try to access it and 
shortly uh, once the propagation is uh, happening you see uh, the entry is already there but what i've done i've updated the uh, so i need to update the nearest record so uh, what i need to do uh, navigate to the record section so simply uh, i need to update the entry here so i've, I've removed the previous code balancers for this for uh, make sure that uh, everything goes okay so um regarding the alias um, to application load balancer and simply remove this entry so only one entry is populated now so simply save it and uh, let's wait for a while to make sure everything is okay so this is our the dual stack um, i mean uh, our load balancer so let me refresh it and let's try to access this guy sorry this one you see it is fixed so um, this is the way you can simply allow uh, from the secured perspective, um, uh, this is not publicly available. For instance, if I, yeah, if I change my IP addresses to different IP, this is not going to be work because uh, if I navigate to the security group section, so let me do that as well. So that is important for your understanding. So if you navigate to the load balance section, navigate, uh, okay, click this guy, uh, click uh, to the security section, you will see the key uh, security name. Okay, so let me refresh it here. So okay uh, let me refresh it because uh, it seems to be the old tab and um, as i discussed i've removed the old load balancer so simply uh, click this guy and let me get to the security section you will see the two security groups so let's open that in one security group uh, you will see no ingress and the other security group you will see and the ingress 80 and 443 are going to be only available from my ip address or you can say your vpn address so see this is this one is empty so let's check uh, the other one so click this guy scroll it down you see the port 80 and 443 has my IP addresses, or you can serve the VPN address. So if uh, you can connect with the VPN, you can simply access this particular application load balancer, um, which is ingress to your VPN. So this is one of the security um, annotation you can use uh, through ingress. So I've done some additional stuff. It's just not regarding the installation of um, ELB ingress controller through the sub module of uh, Blueprints. Uh, and uh, you know, I've shown you some of the sub which you can do and which is actually required. So uh, in the last, uh, I guess uh, we can uh, do stuff with regard to the carpenter which is left. So simply navigate to the section, uh, open the logs of the carpenter. Uh, if you navigate to the section uh, parts, navigate to the carpenter section, you'll see two logs. Currently you'll see um, errors and, and those errors are because we have not actually applied the settings. So uh, let me show you the stuff. So this is the info. And if you uh, see these particular logs, you will see the error. So, so simply fix this, uh, so simply, uh, uh, we are going to the last step of our uh, setup so you can do a lot more with this sub module they are a lot i mean they are actually including a lot of stuff here so what uh, we are going to do uh, if you want to see the detail regarding the carpenter i've already shown you guys the video you can watch those so simply i'm going to apply this file i'm going to show you what these files are so and we have the default provisioner and our custom provisioner so uh, if i let those other stuff which we have actually finished we are now heading to our uh, towards our last um, uh, step which is the carpenter so uh, this is our custom provision right and i've covered the detail we're going to use the three three t three medium spot um, here section here and this is the default stuff so i've done the apply but i forget to add one thing here i need to write the instance profile the instance profile i can get simply by copying this file right and paste this file in your cli so you will see one profile which is going to be of uh, this node group on demand node group uh, which is the managed node group so i'm going to copy this guy here and I'm going to simply navigate to this section and I'm going to do a reapply here because that particular file does not exist. So profile, so simply quit here and let me do um, the reapply here. So this is the uh, profile which we are going to use and uh, this is the instance profile and uh, from the custom provisioner, we are actually calling this, uh, cust uh, I mean, default provisioner. So uh, in the app section, so we are going to, uh, I mean, um, use this particular, uh, Sorry, uh, this this app, right? So uh, this is the app, and we are going to do uh, port forwarding to uh, this app on our local machine. And uh, let's do that. So, uh, and we are going to do uh, some of the load testing on this machine, and we are going, going to do the uh, scaling as well on this particular um, port. So let's try to apply this uh, stuff. So let's do uh, CD into this app. So give CTL apply. I can apply this app. Okay, this port is created along with that. If we see kubectl um, get HPA, 
And one thing I forget, uh, we are not just uh, doing, we, are, we have set up also the matrix server, we have installed the matrix server as well. kubectl uh, do um, pop ports in all namespaces. You will see the CPU utilization and the memory utilization of these, and those particular ports of all ports which are required to get the HP horizontal port or scalar to work. So uh, first of all, uh, I need to show you the stuff uh, with regard to the scaling. So uh, if I navigate to the section default and um, this is the app we have uh, deployed 57, uh, 57 seconds ago. So let me try to uh, scale this guy. Let's try to scale to okay, 55 parts. So let's see what we have got uh, regarding the uh, instance creation. Uh, do we have our pod still stuck in pending state or uh, to, uh, okay, max set up of replica is 10. So, uh, okay, max replica is set up of 10. So let me, let me do, Change this guy to 100, min mix to this guy, uh, I mean 1 to 100. So let me do apply F1 YAML. So, uh, okay, then if I scale it down, uh, scale uh, that particular guy to, okay, simply scale that guy to, let's say 46 parts. So you see, uh, launch new instances. So if I navigate uh, to the UI EC2 section, I just want to show you how the Carpenter work. I mean, regarding setting, if we have done, we have uh, set up our custom provisioner. See, it has launched our custom uh, provisioner. So uh, you see the name of that provisioner is app. You see, initialization of those ports, I mean, of those EC2 machine has been quickly. And those ports are going to be uh, simply uh, move from, you know, uh, from pending to running state. So, you see the huge list is going to be available. So I'm going to simply uh, scale back to this one section and well, I mean, one TTL is going to be set up. So instead of zero, put it one. So you will shortly see in the log section, these logs are actually of the carpenter. I've intentionally uh, opened these logs. So it is very easier and uh, gives us some more flexibility to see all the logs. Uh, shortly you will see the TTL has been set up to those particular uh, nodes and shortly those particular nodes are going to be uh, deleted. So let me close the other tab, and shortly you will see that uh, those particular nodes are going to be removed. So uh, you have to wait for a while. So the TTL default I've set up, I guess, is of uh, how many seconds? So is of uh, 60 seconds, uh, which is one minute. So, okay, okay, let me scale it down to zero, but uh, I have to do it from the, from this uh, area. Okay, navigate to the section app and simply um, move this guy to one to five because uh, we are doing the changes from the application. So apply these changes from one to five. Okay, and uh, let's try to scale to, okay, simply cancel it. And now we are back and you will see shortly uh, because the TTL has been added and TTL has been removed and shortly you will see um, uh, TTL is going to be added and those are, those nodes are going to be removed. So currently we have running nodes five and the additional ones are Carpenter, but uh, we don't have any you know stuff. So uh, the max applications are ports are five. So it is going to uh, simply remove the additional nodes. So uh, it is going to be done quickly. So we have to wait for a while to make sure that uh, everything is removed. So let me pause the video till then I will be back with you guys in a moment. So guys, uh, if you see the logs, TTL added to the empty nodes and uh, then quarter nodes and then deleted nodes. So let's now get back to the section to see are in state so uh, carpenter is working fine right and uh, that is uh, pretty much uh, regarding the stuff we are looking for and in the last what we're going to do um, we are going to go uh, to this application and let me uh, do the update so let's try to add uh, 10 nodes right? and CPU utilization memory utilization change it to uh, change it to 80 and let's try to apply 
So I just want to show you or highlight uh, this is the auto scaling uh, or horizontal pod auto scaler version two. Um, you might be using the beta, uh, but this is not going to work in the, uh, I guess, version 1.23 or 1.24. We are using the version 1.25. So let's try to simply apply this uh, app.yaml. So, so it has uh, configured and uh, let me navigate to the section ports and deployment. Okay. So uh, from the console, you can see the namespaces, events, and uh, Limit means the HPA. Okay, so let's close the logs of the uh, carpenters. You see, uh, this is our HPA which we have set up the min, max, ports, and replicas. So, um, and what we are going to do, uh, we are going to do the port forwarding uh, to this guy. To uh, if you navigate to the service section, you will see uh, that it's service. And uh, okay, we have not set up the service, so we have a deployment and uh, four ports are going to be running because the cpu utilization uh, i mean on the ports uh, make it to uh, make it uh, you know increase uh, from one port to uh, four ports so if i navigate to this section you see min replica and max replicas are 10 but the cpu utilization of those particular ports uh, if i do kubectl um, top uh, in namespace default CPU and memory utilization. So currently the memory uh, utilization is uh, uh, 10M and uh, after a few minutes, uh, it is going to reduce uh, to uh, one. So uh, if I do, uh, for, I mean, if you uh, send the load to this particular port, let me do that. And if I do, uh, so, so first of all, I need to Make sure I do the port forward to cube CTL do port. Let's quickly do that too. Uh, I mean do port forward and dash dash address is going to be 0 .0 .0. Uh, okay. Port forward to uh, let's say this part, right? And let's do that in the namespace default. So okay, I might be misspelled. Port for cube CTL, port forward. Okay, instead of Instead of address should be uh, okay. I, I get I forget the port mapping as well. So let's do the dash dash address. Okay, and the port mapping is going to be port mapping like this way to my uh, container. So if I do open uh, another tab and if I do that uh, into this particular um, container again, so if I do call hyphen b and telnet to this. Uh, Local host, I should be able to connect with this port. You see, it is connected. So if I do, um, if I do call uh, local host uh, and um, port eighty slash CPU, and let me open one more tab here. Do exact. Do kubectl uh, top. Uh, top ports in namespace uh, default. I just want to show you uh, the difference in using the CPU and the memory usage. So if you have hit this particular target, uh, you see, I mean, slash CPU, and if you simply hit this target memory, memory, you will see that uh, the difference is going to be uh, available. Uh, I mean, you will see the difference in the memory and CPU utilization shortly, but this will take some time. Uh, you need to wait for and uh, in the past we have uh, when we hit that particular URL our load has increased so kubectl get ports so we have updated the values so um, if we increase the values so we will see uh, some of the see old ports are terminated and new ports some of the stuff um, as I discussed old ports are terminated new stuff is going to be actually able to handle that uh, uh, utilization so this is regarding the horizontal pod autoscaler. You saw uh, these are the limits. Let me change. You see, uh, I've updated the limits from 80 uh, from uh, memory limits. I've updated to 80 and CPU utilization 80. You can reduce the limit and do the testing to these particular endpoints. Um, so currently, I've not set up uh, the Prometheus. Uh, in past videos, I've set up the Prometheus and showed you 
you can see all the CPU and memory utilization of ports in this uh, area of uh, lens. So you will see the Prometheus is not set up. So I've already made videos in regard to that. You can watch those particular uh, particular videos. So guys, if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Have a nice day. Thank you.